Hello and welcome to The Secret Wealth Project, I'm Matt. If you're wondering what these videos are about, what this channel is all about, it's about making money, making passive income, reinvesting that income into uh, passive wealth generating assets and then making that money make you some more money. So basically it's all about making money. Um, and at the moment, one of the best places, in fact, probably the best place in the world to put your money is into internet-based businesses. Um, I don't know of anything that can generate such scalable, massive returns as the internet. There are other places to put your money, but the internet has massively lower barriers to entry to m than most businesses, and little old you and little old me can take on the massive likes of the huge retailers and the huge companies in the world um, on a much more level playing field than has ever been like possible. So we're living in a great, great age really when it comes to uh, making money because the internet, if you get it right, can make you an absolute fortune. So with that being said, that's what this video is about and it's about passive wealth creation um, in 2017 or passive income creation in 2017 and it's my personal plan um, that I'm hoping may give you some inspiration. Um, this plan could always be changed. I might drop part of it at some point. Um, I might include new parts of it um, at some point but this is the plan as it stands right now. So I'll get right into it. I've created a nice little coggle for you guys because I think I think these coggle things are quite nice. It's like a mind map, but they're kind of pretty. Um, and they've got little wiggly lines on them. So I did this um, did this mind map a week or so ago, a while ago now. So I've not just re-looked through it. I like my videos to be kind of spontaneous if they can be. So I'm just going to crack on and talk through it. So I'm not even sure where to start. But what I'll do is I'll zoom out a little bit. Um, I mean, I'm hoping you get some inspiration from this, guys. You know, I'm not saying copy exactly what I'm doing. I'm not saying what I'm doing is the right thing for you or the right thing for me even. It's just my little passive income creation plan as of right now for the next year. Um, so, so to go into the first thing, existing income streams okay so obviously I'm gonna have existing income streams they're not going to change um, these well they might change hopefully they'll change positively but um, the, I'm not gonna actively kind of pursue these in a kind of building kind of way but existing income streams can include dividend paying shares um, I've got to admit I've been expecting the stock market to crash in 2017 hello fish Oh, it's nice, you, it's nice you to join me. Um, so I've been expecting the, the stock market to crash in 2017. So um, I kind of sold all my shares at the beginning of the year. And we had a slight kind of, it looked like I timed it perfectly because the stock market kind of went bad for a while and then it kind of rebounded. And then people were talking about it's going to go bad for Trump. Um, and I do still think the stock market is going to go bang, but you know what, trying to time it, you know, for anyone, it's impossible. People try, people people talk about it. There's a guy called Bert Doman that I was following um, on his Wellington letter. And the guy supposedly predicted every stock market turn upwards and downwards for the past 30 years or something. And it sounded amazing. So I've subscribed to this expensive newsletter. And I was following his suggestions and stuff. And all I've done is lose money with his suggestions and sold all my shares when I could have kept them and done all right from them. But he's the kind of guy, and I'm not bashing him, I mean, he's a smart cookie, but he's the kind of guy that um, remembers all his wins and forgets all his losses, in my opinion. And that's just my opinion. So, um, yeah, it looked great, but it wasn't so great. But anyway, I sold my sold most of my shares. I'm kind of out of the share buying game for now. I mean, if the stock market does crash massively, I should say I am in the stock market, but I'm, I'm short in the shares, which means you make money when they go down. Um, 
but that's not going so well for me. So I kind of like to stay away from shitters, to be honest, because they, they're a bit volatile for me at the minute. Obviously, if the stock market crashes like crazy and I've got some cash at the time in reserves, then I will buy big companies like uh, Tesla, Disney, um, and other big companies, you know, big companies that are likely to have good long-term success and growth prospects. Um, and I'll do that. Say that, say the stock market crashed 60%, then I'll be waiting there with some cash to pile in at the bottom, wherever that might be. But there's a term in stock stock buying circles and investment circles that you should never try and catch a falling dagger. So it's like, imagine a dagger dropping. So this is a stock market going down. It's like trying to catch it like that. You, you know, you might catch it, you might not. You might catch the bottom, you might not. Um, I think that's the, the right term anyway. But yeah, catching falling daggers tends not to work either. So you never know where the bottom is with the stock market. But if it presented appropriate value at that point, then I'd probably look to, to go in big if I've got cash available at the time. Information products, this is a good one. Um, information products are a wonderful thing because at, at the end of the day, you can create a course or create some kind of video series or ebooks or something like that. And you can um, make money. Uh, you can even create free free products and monetize them with affiliate links and things like that. Um, but information products is another existing income stream that I probably won't actively massively build, but um, it's there. Um, got cash flow and property. I've got a few properties that are rented out. Um, I've got one that I've got to finish off and get a tenant for. So that's going to continue to make me money in 2017 and then other income again private label on amazon i've no plans to really build that but it's it's making steady income nothing groundbreaking but it's there and it's it's established and it's it's nice and then i've just put other in there for all the other bits and bobs that i may um have happening at from time to time um okay so i'm going to move on to this next one uh, sorry, the fish is trying to knock glasses over. There's no water in that one, fish. She's got her head in the glass. But there's no water in it. Um, right, Res commercial to residential conversion. So obviously you guys know uh, I owned a nightclub um, and I ran a nightclub for four or five years, whatever it was. Um, I bought the building in the first place, the freehold on the building, and currently it's non-trading, so... Uh, the intention was to do what I originally wanted to do, which is become kind of like a, a landlord of the building. Um, so I'm going to turn the upstairs into apartments. The downstairs are probably going to split into two commercial units. But yeah, the commercial to residential conversion is still something that um, is ongoing. I was hoping to have it kind of finished by the end of this year, but it's not, I've not even got planning permission yet because the planning department have been really dragging the feet and... Um, it's kind of unseen, the kind of or unheard of, um, the kind of delays that I'm witnessing. But it's just going my way by the looks of it because uh, the planning department recently mentioned that some new court case that has happened while I've been waiting for them to do the planning permission thing, um, some new court cases come about whereby anything under a certain square footage I won't have to pay, I think it's a section 106 or section 21. I'm not sure, there's some number anyway, but basically it's a open space provision. So because I'm looking to turn this commercial property into eight apartments, each apartment will have to make a contribution uh, to open space provisions. So, I don't know, some park or something. Uh, in reality, it's kind of like the, the council kind of just taxing you. Um, and they can kind of spend it on whatever they want as far as I'm aware. But that has been challenged in court or something and something's come about whereby I might not have to pay that. So them dragging their feet for well over six months when it should have been about six weeks, well over six months means that I might actually end up being a little bit better off because of it because I've saved myself something like £21,000. I think they wanted £3,000 per dwelling. Um, so... So I might, might save myself some money there. And I had to pay for their lawyer as well to write up the contract to guarantee that I'll pay them the money. Uh, so it was a bit nuts. And it was over £20,000 I was going to have to pay for this uh, tax. Um, but hopefully I won't have to. 
So yeah, I've got to get planning permission. That's step one, still waiting. Then obviously I've got to get build quotes. Got to figure out if it's worth me um, letting that, letting one builder do the whole project and letting them do it all, or if it's worth me getting a project manager and kind of subcontractors in to do the different parts of it. Um, but we'll have to see. So then I'll have to do the conversion and create commercial cash flow and new leases for downstairs and then there'll be new cash flow and rental apartments. So that's the plan on the property side of things. I'm not intending on buying any new houses in 2017. I might buy one because um, I've still got this one to finish off. So that's going to be 2017 that's, that it gets finished, hopefully pretty quick, maybe January, February, it'll be tenanted. Um, but yeah, I do intend on obviously creating these eight new apartments in 2017 and hopefully getting some commercial um, tenants for the downstairs of it, maybe a couple of shops or something. So that's the um, passive property side of my businesses. Um, that's what I'm hoping to do. I've linked this up here, existing income streams. I've made this little link look. Um, this goes up to property rental, whereby it says consider buying an, an additional property for rental. That's what I've just already mentioned um, I'll, I'll see if it's worth me buying one. Depends what the prices are like and what, what things are going like. Obviously, um, if property still continues to go through the roof, I might just take my foot off the gas and not bother. But if I can get something for a decent price, something something presents itself, then uh, I might jump on one more for 2017. <clears throat> and yeah, that's complete and rent out latest purchase. So that's my property rental. And this is the commercial to residential conversion. So that's 2017's plan on the property side of things. Obviously, we've got to the point with the online arbitrage business, or I've got to the point with, with the online arbitrage business, whereby it's 99% outsourced. I've still got to tweak things. I've still got to get the systems more correct, and I've got to kind of put a few more bits and bobs in place, place but it's mostly finished. So obviously... Um, Holly's doing a lot of the sourcing. I've got my Filipino VA, Chris, virtual assistant, doing a lot of the sourcing. And between the pair of them, they've kind of got the online arbitrage business sorted out from a sourcing point of view. So going into the automated sourcing, I've got FBA Wizard um, sourcing software. If you want a link for a free trial, there's a link in the description below for FBA Wizard. Um, it's an affiliate link. If you use it, though, I will look after you. I've been telling people for a long time that have been watching my videos that I'm going to do something special for anyone that purchases through any of my affiliate links. Um, and if you purchase through my affiliate link um, and you could prove that to me that you actually bought the product and I would have earned a commission from it, um, then I will do something special for you. I'm still figuring out what that is. Some people think I probably probably think I've forgotten about that. I've not. I don't forget about these things, guys. It's there. I just want to make it something very, very special for you. And it's not like I'll forget you. And it's not like it won't be timeless. So even if it's six months from now that I do something special, I will remember to do something very special for everyone that bought through a link of mine. So make sure you take a screenshot um, of your purchase. So when it comes to me doing something special for you guys that nobody else gets, whatever it may be, you'll be able to say, yep, yeah, here you go, Matt, this is this is my purchase I made through your link. Give me the freebie. Um, but yeah, I'm so focused on creating free content for the channel at the minute, and I try to deliver as much value as I can. It makes it difficult to deliver more value um, beyond that. And I've had a few ideas for a while, but I've not had any time um, or certainty in the idea to like kind of you know put the effort into make it happen but I'm not forgetting you guys don't worry anyone that buys through one of my links and can prove it will get looked after so link down below if you want a free trial but that's amazing software FBA wizard is unreal I've got to thank Sean Mitchell the the creator for creating what I think is probably the best software I've ever used. If you can't make money with FBA Wizard, you've either got not enough money to start with that you shouldn't really be sourcing with anything um, automated. You should kind of just get a few deals under your belt, maybe with a scanning app, retail arbitrage or something. But if you can't make money with 
FBA wizard, then there is something wrong with you. Um, the software is fantastic. It's amazing. It's great. Sometimes it's harder to find deals than other times, but most of the time it's just like slam dunk, shooting fish in a barrel, especially when the sales are on. So yeah, I've got my automated sorting, sourcing going on with what with FBA Wizard software. I've got my virtual assistant Chris, and then um, Holly is my UK employee buyer. So Chris sources them, Holly sources them. Holly checks over the deals and buys them. Obviously, they both use FBA Wizard. Chris uses it while we're asleep because of the Filipino time difference, and Holly uses it while we're awake. But it basically means we've got uh, the sourcing side of things, or I've got the sourcing side of things on my business. I've got the sourcing side of things totally automated, like a business should be. And that business should grow itself. There's no reason why it shouldn't. At the end of the day, Holly has access to as much capital as she wants. If she tells me she wants to buy 10 grand's worth of products tomorrow, she's got it. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, it will grow as fast as they're able to grow it. As fast as we can find saleable deals, they can scale that business up to whatever. And it's in their hands, really. Um, so that's that. And we've got a prep centre. So the prep centre I can finally recommend. I was not recommending any prep centres uh, because it's one of them things whereby if they make a mistake on your behalf, it could be de detrimental to your business. Um, but FBA Ship UK is, in my opinion, a really, really, really good prep centre and I'm very happy with, with them. Uh, if you do talk to them, and, and please don't bombard them with emails or phone calls right now, I know for a fact they're not getting back to everybody at the minute because they're overwhelmed. But you know what? Like a good business does, they're saying instead of taking on every customer that they can and then not being able to service any of them, they're only taking on customers that they can handle. So you might have to wait until after Christmas before you set up a prep centre. So, I mean, we're a week or week or so away, guys. Do you know what I mean? So, don't... I know you're going to watch this video now, probably before Christmas, um, and you might be thinking, oh, yeah, Prep Centre sounds great. But don't contact them yet. Again, tell them I sent you. Matt Holly from The Secret Wealth Project. Tell, tell Devin I sent you. Uh, he may well look after you a little bit better. I don't receive anything from it. There's no affiliate commissions. There's no agreement in place. He doesn't even know I'm recommending him. But I just want to help you guys. And at the end of the day, if you don't want to do all your labeling and your prepping and all your stickering and all that stuff, um, then that's the um, prep centre to use in the UK. You know what? I should start a prep centre because they're so overwhelmed with business and there's a massive opportunity there for people um, that want to do it properly, like Devon does. But I should really start one and recommend my own, shouldn't I? Uh, but now Devon's getting the benefit of my recommendations. But yeah, tell him I sent you. Why not? Um, okay, so new passive income creation model. Leg number, what is it? One, two, three, four, five. Is the Secret Wealth Project. Obviously, this channel is free. It's always been free. And my intention is for this YouTube channel to always continue to be free. My aim is to be, provide massive value and it for, to, for it to be always free. So this is not some kind of bait and switch thing where I'm trying to siphon you off into some coaching business or to siphon you off to build an email list. I've got, I mean, I'm not far off 100 videos now and not once have I asked for any, I've not ever offered anything um, that I'm charging for. I've never offered any kind of, I've never done anything to really, other than a couple of affiliate links, there's, I've not offered no courses, no coaching, I've not offered anything publicly in these videos. Um, now I'm not saying that will always be the case, because at, at the end of the day, um, I'm trying to build a channel here. And at some point, it, it might make sense for me to offer some courses um, or coaching publicly in the channel. But I can assure you that whatever I offer in the future, this channel will always be free. And I will always provide massive value in this channel. This channel is not some bait and switch. This channel is a free resource for you guys, for me to share tips, ideas, thoughts, give you a rant every now and again, keep you updated on my business, hopefully keep you updated on news in the industries that we go to and give you inspiration and motivation. That's what this is about. It's free. It always will be. Having said that, 
it would be very foolish for me not to, at some point in the future, if I can provide massive value on a paid basis, it would be, I'd be an idiot not to consider creating some high-end, as you can see here, create some high-end advanced paid training courses um, with beginner to kind of the beginning stage, reaching the intermediate stage, training always be free. So like my first port of call would be an online arbitrage course for beginners, which is what I've done. And you guys, as far as I'm, I can see, that's already available on the channel. It's free. It always will be free. And you guys like it as far as I can see. So that's the idea. You've got good, solid, grounding information that gets you started and gets you earning money um, and enough to get you going, you know, so then you can learn the rest on your own if you want. But the idea is for that to always be free in this channel. I'm going to do a, a, a Shopify course soon, probably early 2017. I don't think I'm going to start it this year, probably early 2017. We're still focusing on the online arbitrage business model for now because Q4 is here and Christmas is here and sales are going nuts. So I don't want to take our eyes off the ball, take your eyes off the ball and kind of lead you a different direction. It makes total sense for you right now to stick with online arbitrage if that's the business model you're following. It's Christmas. Um, I'm not saying like a Shopify course wouldn't be appropriate for um, Christmas. It would. There's people making big money. But it's a little bit late for that anyway. Um, the business model I'm probably going to be talking about is a, a drop shipping business model. And mostly it's not fast delivery on that anyway. It can take a while for delivery, especially if you're drop shipping from China. Um, so the margins can be great, but the delivery times um, can be a little bit long. So you're not going to not really going to be able to set it up, learn it, scale it up and stuff in time for Christmas anyway. So that's a 2017 plan, really. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to be creating a Shopify course for beginners. Um, and the intention will be to take somebody that's got no experience doing, say, anything other than like online arbitrage or Amazon FBA or whatever. But take or, or even if you've got no experience in online businesses, take a raw beginner and take them to the point whereby they've a got the Shopify store set up, loaded with the right apps, um, loaded with the right products, um, set up the first Facebook ads or Instagram influencer contact contacts or whatever. But basically, get you from knowing nothing about Shopify in your own e-commerce platform to all the way up to made my first sale. At that point, I'll go job done. They've made a sale. If you can make one sale, you can make 10,000 sales. And that's the start of it. That's that magical moment. The moment you make that first sale is the moment where the belief kicks in and you go, wow, I made money in my sleep. I didn't have to do anything anything for that. I just made money. And I've already set up a few stores now and I've got them all to the point whereby they've made initial sales. So I do feel... Um, confident at this stage that I could teach this stuff well enough that you could make your first sales too. Have I made a million pounds from Shopify yet? No. Will I? We can only hope. I'm going to try my best. And when I do, that's when it might make sense to go, right, I can probably help you get rich from this. Potentially. I mean, I don't want to say get rich, but I can maybe teach you what you need to know to absolutely get rich from this business model because I understand it fully now. And at that point, that's when maybe down the line, and again, it's a big maybe, I might not, um, but that's when I maybe offer a paid either coaching or a paid course or something like that, some kind of mentorship role. So we're not there yet, but I'm there. I, I could teach you how to set up a Shopify store and, and get it making money. Um, so yeah, I, I've got to, in the future, consider creating higher end advanced paid training courses uh, but like I say, beginner to intermediate training will always be free. Um, and obviously, I've got to consider offering coaching. I mean, a, a couple of people have messaged me in private and asked if I do coaching for online arbitrage. And for a while, I wasn't offering it. But I think I've got to a stage whereby I understand the mechanics well enough that I could help anyone make money with this business model. Um, and decent money if they're the right type of person. So would I offer coaching? Yeah, to the right people, um, as long as it's not going to cause them any financial hardship. And if I feel I can genuinely help them, then yeah, I would offer coaching at this stage in time. Uh, but do I offer it publicly? No. Um, but again, it's possibly a passive income stream. 
uh, for the Secret Wealth Project. I suppose it, it, coaching wouldn't be passive for me unless I had someone else doing the coaching. But still, I'm, I'm putting it in there because Secret Wealth Project is very much a passive thing. It's not something that I'm actively pursuing as a business to try and make money in. It's not like I'm bombarding you guys every day with adverts for my coaching and adverts for my um, courses or whatever. You know, I don't do that. Up until this point, it's all free and I like it that way and I think you guys like it that way. But I've got to, in the future, consider possibly making money from the Secret Wealth Project. Again, that's not what it's about and I do reiterate, it will always be free. The basic information and the good, solid, beginner to intermediate information will always be free and I will always do my best to deliver massive value. I'll even deliver advanced tips um, in, in the Secret Wealth Project as and when they seem appropriate. Um, obviously, there's some YouTube ad revenue. I can tell you right now, I don't think I'm going to get rich from YouTube ad revenue. Um, I am on $83, I think. Bear in mind, I've made 90 videos or something like that, like 80 videos, I don't know. So I'm, I'm about $1 a, a, a per video so far. So I'm not going to get rich from YouTube ad revenue, but it's an income stream, so I thought I'd mention it. I mean, if I if I make a thousand dollars in 2017 from YouTube ad revenue, I'll be surprised. But you've got to remember, it's still money. You know, a thousand dollars is a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars at the end of 2017 is a thousand dollars I didn't have at the beginning. So I'm not going to thumb my nose at a thousand dollars if it ends up being that. And fantastic. From doing something I love. I mean, I love doing these videos. These videos are about you guys. I want to help you. I want to give back. And these videos are about you. So if, if I can make a thousand dollars from someone playing some ads on some videos, I'm fine with that. That suits me. Um, obviously there's the affiliate income. Again, this is this is not massive. Um, I think I probably made I guess probably made a couple hundred dollars from affiliate income from the Secret Wealth Project so far. Um, you know, maybe maybe by the end of the year it might be two hundred and fifty dollars, something like that. Um, nothing groundbreaking you know most people probably wouldn't want to get out of bed for that kind of money uh, so again I mention it here just because it is part of my passive income stream and it makes it for a better video but it's not something I'm going to rely on heavily I'm not expecting to get rich from affiliate income it's just a little bit of side side uh, money but again it, I mean if if I could make like three thousand dollars from it in 2017 it's better than nothing isn't it uh, but again, I only promote things that I truly, truly, truly believe in. And just like Devon's Prep Center, FBA Ship, if it hasn't got an affiliate program or there's nothing in it for me, I'll still tell you about it. It's not about the money, okay? So, um, and then consider releasing related products and services. Again, I think I can offer some serious, serious, serious value to a lot of people watching this. But until I have a clear vision as to what, when, and how, I won't offer anything. And when I do, I'm not going to turn the channel into some kind of crazy pitch fest. Um, it's not gonna, I'm not going to be creating video after video after video trying to pitch some course. That's not my style. I want Secret Wealth Project to be somewhere that you guys recommend to other people. You know, I want you to go in Facebook groups and say, you know what, you want a, a free online arbitrage course. This is a really good start. You know, don't pay someone $300 to do it. Get your beginning stuff here. And they even ask questions. You know, I want you to feel so confident recommending our stuff because it's free and good that you go and spread the words and spread the message. You know, so if and when it makes sense to re release something paid for, I will do that. Um, but again, it's got to make sense for you guys. It's got to make sense for, you, for me. Um, then this leads me on to scaling up the Shopify business. So where I really see the Shopify business being big in fact, the, the, the one I will probably teach you, the method I will teach you, which is probably the cheapest way to get into it and the easiest way to get into it, will be dropshipping. Okay? So you can use an app um, and dropship directly from AliExpress. Downside being delivery can take two to four weeks. Um, but it's not forced to bother people if you do the right things in the right order. Um, but you can drop ship directly from AliExpress to your customers. So you don't have to buy no stock or anything like that. And you can test products really quickly and really easily um, using 
drop shipping on AliExpress model through Shopify. This is the one I'm probably going to be teaching. Okay, when I do do the free course, hopefully January or very early 2017, I'm going to be teaching this drop shipping model. The other drop shipping model is print on demand. So, um, like for example, there's apps that you can plug into Shopify that will uh, create and print um, T-shirts for you. So you could potentially sell a T-shirt on Facebook by targeting tightly, uh, tightly knit, tight niche of customers. You can target them. Say you could target American males between the ages of 30 and 35 that live in three, these three states that earn this much money that are interested in fishing, horse riding, and Seinfeld TV program. Boom, you can literally, on Facebook ads, you can literally get that targeted. So you literally, you can target such a tight group of specific customers. So you can potentially create a t-shirt for say someone that likes fishing and likes guns. Do you know what I mean? It's probably going to be a US customer, but the Secret Wealth Project is about a worldwide audience. I know we've got a very core UK audience, probably because I'm English, um, and I've only exposed the group in English kind of channels. But, you know, I want I want an international audience on this channel. It's about the Americans, it's about the Australians, it's about the Canadians, it's about everyone. You know, Germans, French, I want everyone on here. If you can understand me and speak English, I want you on the Secret Wealth Project. I want you doing this stuff. I want you watching this stuff. I want to help you. Um, but yeah, for example, if they're into fishing and guns, you could create a, a t-shirt that says, I love fishing and guns. And then you could just literally, on Facebook, you could target an audience. Um, some people call it flex targeting. Uh, I can't remember what the other names for it are. But basically, you take this group of people, which are interested in fishing, and then you get this group of people that are interested in guns, okay? Someone that's just interested in guns and doesn't fish is not going to buy a t-shirt that says, I love fishing and guns. Someone that's just interested in the opposite is not going to buy it. But you know when you get, when they merge and you've got just the people interested in fishing that are interested in guns, you've got that little cross section of people, magic happens. Because now you've got a t-shirt that speaks directly to somebody that nobody's ever spoken to before. Or it could be, I love cats and ironing. I don't know, you know, whatever you can, whatever you can conceive, you can achieve, uh, but you can specifically target tight groups of people and offer them products, for example, t-shirt products. Um, and again, there's apps and plugins that you can do this with on Shopify. I'm going to talk more about t-shirts in a minute. But that's the drop shipping on Shopify. This is where I think the real money's at. Okay, and it's combining skill sets gained over the last few years kind of thing but basically a new potential private label non-amazon brand and i've got a couple of ideas one of them's holly's idea actually and it's really really good i love it um and the other one is my idea it's not a unique idea that one it's just some a direction i think i could go down so i've called them brand one which is code name you're going to try and guess but don't bother because i've not made them that obvious sw1 and then brand name two, brand two, code name MG1. Machine gun one. We're talking about guns a lot in this video. <laughs> um, but no, I think I think this is huge, right? People are obsessed with like private label on Amazon. Setting up a private label brand on Amazon. That's got really difficult, guys. It's got really difficult since Amazon made the incentivized review changes. People are scrambling over the same traffic. Uh, not able really to build it in a way that they could before. And the people pitching the courses and stuff, they've got established email lists and established customers and established marketing channels. They're all right. They could just release new products to those people. But if you're fresh and you've not done private label before, private labeling on Amazon just got real tough um, a few months ago, a couple of months back or whatever. Real tough. I wouldn't want to be doing it. But here's where you kind of do the crossover skill sets that I like to talk about. You've got Shopify, you're going to develop this skill set when I start teaching you how to do the drop shipping. So you're going to get that. And then combine it with private label that maybe you've learned from some Amazon course elsewhere. Or maybe I will teach you private label in the future in relation to Shopify. You know, But if you combine them two, 
that's where I think you could have a very, very, very successful scalable business. I think it would be easier to create a business on Shopify nowadays with your own private label product line, your range, not one product, a range, than it is on Amazon. Some people might want to shoot me down for that. Um, but that's just how I feel. Whether it's right or not, that's how I feel. I think it's actually easier to do it on Shopify and generate your own traffic, generate your own marketing uh, than it is to do it on Amazon and leverage their traffic. Um, but I mean, to a certain extent, there would be room for both. But I think if I had to place a bet, if I had to say, right, somebody that knows what they're doing with Shopify and private label versus someone new has never done it before and has no ex existing kind of marketing assets, no email list or whatever, someone new on Amazon launching a private label product, I would say the guy that knows about Shopify and private label is going to probably be the guy on Amazon with private label. But at some point, if you build a massive brand on your own website, or on your own Shopify e-commerce store, then... You can just go, right, okay, now we're going to offer it on Amazon. And you've probably already got enough infrastructure in place to be able to generate massive sales through Amazon as well. Then that becomes, instead of a launch channel, it becomes an additional income channel. And I'm all for that. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go on to the last thing on the list, which I added after um, I created this plan the other day. Um, but it's a print-on-demand T-shirt business, okay, there's something you might not have heard of yet, especially if you're not American, called Merch by Amazon, okay? And basically, I think it, I don't know if it stands for Merchandise by Amazon. I think it probably does. But basically, it's like print on demand, but Amazon do it. So um, you can kind of create a t-shirt design, say, put it on Merch by Amazon, and then Amazon will sell that to their, um, to their customers. So you know the power of Amazon. You know how many customers they've got. I mean, the platform's huge. Merch by Amazon is a way for you to, without investing in stock, create T-shirt designs and stuff and put them on Amazon and leverage their traffic. I think this is huge. Now, why am I not doing this yet? I'd love to be. I've applied for Merch by Amazon a while ago, and as of yet, I've not heard back from them. So I don't know... I've heard that it can take six months or something like that. So I'm just playing a waiting game for now. Uh, but I'm, I'm liking the look of this. It won't last forever. And, and you know what? Amazon have been absolute, I don't want to swear, but absolute horrible people to, to their merch by Amazon sellers recently. Within the last week, they've just been deleting and banning accounts left, right and centre. So is it a business I'd want to build... And feel safe that I could go to sleep and it's still going to be there in the morning. No, probably not. And people say, yes, if you stick to the Amazon terms of service, you'll be fine. Really? When some crazy kind of clueless idiot is banning accounts left, right and centre. I'm sorry, but I won't sleep fine with that. But is it not something that you can kind of build a massive business on in the meantime before someone may maybe bans your account? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you're always at risk when you're using someone else's platform of getting banned or kicked off or restricted in some way. It's part of the business. But, um, I mean, I've been selling products on ClickBank forever. Um, and I remember feeling in the mid-2000s, I remember thinking, God, what if ClickBank, you know, this ClickBank is like a, an information products uh, company kind of thing whereby you put an information product on ClickBank so it could be about fitness or something you make a fitness product and you can sell it on ClickBank and then they've got an affiliate uh, network and then you hope that some of them affiliates pick up your product and promote it for you and blah 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 um, but I've been doing ClickBank forever and I remember in the mid-2000s thinking um, god I'm, I'm, I'm relying on ClickBank a lot here you know I'm putting all my eggs in one basket well as of like 2016, they've been pretty good from a not banning people point of view and things like that. I mean, the proper idiots that are proper just looking to kind of really be naughty and like literally like copy and paste someone's website and then make it their own and stuff like that. They get banned, of course. Uh, but decent normal sellers don't typically live in fear of ClickBank from day to day. Or if they do, I'm, I'm unaware of it. Um, Merch by Amazon is not that way that all the sellers right now are in fear of their accounts getting uh, deleted I mean one guy he's got 5,000 t-shirt designs on Merch by Amazon as far as I'm aware he's making real good money on it 
and he's deleted 700 of his own designs. Just so merch by Amazon don't have any little excuse to come and go, oh, 5,000 t-shirts, we're going to delete you, which they've been doing crazy stuff like that. So Amazon is like a drunk person with a loaded, loaded gun at times. Um, and I'm not saying rely entirely on Amazon, but if you can leverage their traffic and channel, then you'd be stupid not to. Which leads me on to other other um, people. Redbubble is number two. Redbubble has probably, I mean, I don't want to put a figure on it because it will change all the time and, and your experience may vary. But as far as I can see, Redbubble probably has about 5 to 10% of Merch by Amazon's kind of volume. Um, they're definitely the clear runner-up. So Redbubble is another platform you could offer your products on. Again, I'm I'm dabbling in this right now. I've got um, some T-shirt designs live or going live on Redbubble. Um, there's Tee Public and there's Zazzle. They've all got their own varying amounts of uh, internal traffic. Obviously, if you create a T-shirt, you can you can fire traffic to it from um, whatever channel it's on um, but ideally the, the beauty of merch by Amazon is that they have their own traffic so um, you can leverage that traffic and that's where the power of Amazon is really the fact that they've already got their user base their customer base and you kind of tap into that when you offer products on, on something like merch by Amazon Redbubble has a lot of internal traffic nowhere near as much as merch by Amazon because Amazon, merch by Amazon literally is using Amazon's platform and you know what Amazon's like especially in the US very 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 popular um, but yeah Redbubble, TeePublic, Zagzal these are ways to diversify your income stream so let's say I mean in the meantime before I get approved for Merch by Amazon if I get approved by Merch, Merch by Amazon I'm going to launch on these other platforms and maybe explore further platforms on top of these ones um, and then if and when Merch by Amazon say it's okay I will already have the data and the best t-shirts to then launch directly onto Merch by Amazon straight away. And if Merch by Amazon come with a ban hammer and go, naughty boy, you're off here, then I've always got the income streams from these. So yeah, that's, I'm, I'm losing my voice. This always happens on these long videos. I should drink more. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that's, that's the last um, income, income stream for 2017 that I'm planning at this point to pursue passive income in, income screen it, let me try that again passive income stream um, so that's 2017's plan for me so I will put this coggle this mind map into the Secret Wealth Project Facebook group which I will also link down below so you can go there and join if you've not already uh, but I'll put this coggle in there for free if you want to have another look and have a little click around or whatever. Um, I hope you got some inspiration or some kind of, I hope I've kind of made you think a little bit. Maybe made you think outside the box, outside the Amazon box. Amazon is not everything, guys. Um, building your house on Amazon is like building your house on sand, you know. You know, selling products and building your business around Amazon and only Amazon is like building your house on sand. Shaky foundations. Hey, it might stand there 100 years, but it might not. Probably won't. At some point, it's probably going to sink a little bit. You don't want to be building businesses like that. Is it not a great channel to leverage? Yes. Is it something you should look to get some kind of automated business within? Absolutely. That's what I'm doing. And that's what I've been focusing on for the last few months. Uh, creating this, where is it? Creating this online arbitrage business. I've got there, guys. It's a really nice way to start a business. Pretty simple, not too technical, not too difficult. Don't have to be a creative genius to do it. Um, it's nice and easy. It's just buying and selling, and it's easy to outsource. So, this is what I've been doing at some point. In the very, very, very near future, I'm going to totally step away from it. I'm not going to stop doing it. I'm just going to let it run itself. Uh, you don't want to start businesses that are like jobs, whereby you've got to do everything yourself. You want to start businesses that are like businesses, you know, self-building, self-sustaining businesses that build whether you are involved or not. 
And that's what I'm hoping this will become very shortly. I mean, we're, we're about there, to be fair. Um, and I'm hoping this is going to pay my 2017 bills. I'm hoping this is going to take us on a couple of nice holidays and pay the bills. And then the other stuff starts to become just gravy or uh, icing on the cake. So, yeah, I'm going to cut this video here. We're approaching 50 minutes again. It's a long one. I appreciate everyone that watches these videos. If you got any value from this video, guys, please take the moment to just give me a thumbs up. I analyze these thumbs up. I, like I look at the ratios and I'm like, right, okay. I got one, one, I got 10 views to one like. That means people thought it was an all right video. Not amazing, but it was all right. And my core followers, my core supporters, you Secret Wealth Project um, founding fathers and fatheresses, founding, founding mothers. Yeah, you guys are the ones that give me them little clicks and I really appreciate those. Um, they keep me going. And then when, when I'm like get one thumbs up to every five views, I'm like, yeah, they really loved that video. You know, it signals to me what you want. It sends me right down the right direction. And then when I get like one thumb up for like 30 views, I'm like, oh God, what did, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? So I actually look at that stuff, guys. So if you did enjoy it, if you did get some value from it, please take a moment to just give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already and you want to see more of this kind of video, it's all about making money, guys. It's all about building wealth, creating wealth, uh, creating passive income streams. But if you want to see more of this stuff, click the subscribe button. Is it going to be down? It's going to be down there, isn't it? Let's click the subscribe button somewhere over there. Um, and leave a comment. Tell me what you thought about it. Tell me what you want to see in future. So, hope you enjoyed it, guys. Hope your sales are going really well. Um, hope I've inspired you and made you think about what you want to do in 2017. Um, and I hope you really enjoyed the video. Rogue One's on tonight. I'm booked in for the VIP showing of Rogue, Rogue One at the local Cineworld. Um, and it's VIP seats. It's like electrically electric seats that do this. There's a lounge with free food in it before you go in. I've not done this VIP cinema experience yet, but I thought I'm a massive Star Wars fan. Absolutely love Star Wars. Rogue One comes out at five past midnight tonight or something. So that's the show I'm going to see. Me and Ollie are going to get some sleep this afternoon and we're going to go and hopefully enjoy a great film. Um, so, yeah, that's it really, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, this has been The Secret Wealth Project. I'm Matt. I'll speak to you in the next video. See you next time.